Hey, good Monday evening, everybody. Welcome back. Got a quick update for you here on the tropics, and we now have officially newly formed Tropical Storm Ernesto moving towards the Antilles here and the Leeward Islands. Uh, and already bringing some of those impacts, but that's going to be the big theme of tonight's video. Again, uh, not going to be a super long video, but I am going to update you again on what's happening. So if you're new here, welcome. Uh, also, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely do that and like the video. We're trying to get to 10,000 subs by the end of hurricane season here and uh, knocking on the doorstep of 9,000 already, so 10,000 is not far away. Um, now, with that said, we can go ahead and just jump right into it, really, uh, because again, uh, not too much has changed from this morning, but again, we do have some to discuss. So, uh, latest here on satellite, this is now Tropical Storm Ernesto, now newly formed Tropical Storm Ernesto at that, uh, here already kind of bringing some of those impacts to portions of the Antilles, and this storm is booking it right now, moving west at about 26 miles an hour, uh, which um, unfortunately I can't convert that to kilometers an hour, but uh, either way, a very quick moving tropical system here. Uh, and it's going to bring pretty widespread impacts through the islands here, even up through uh, Puerto Rico and into uh, the uh, other islands here in this part of the Caribbean. Now, after that, all eyes will turn to Bermuda as the storm could bring impacts to you folks. And then after that, all eyes to Atlantic Canada and cannot completely rule out the Northeast United States yet. But uh, again, trends have been good for you folks up in that part of the country. Now, if we zoom this in a little bit more and take a, uh, you know, kind of broader look at the Atlantic Basin right now. Again, this is Ernesto. That's the, uh, you know, only official storm on the map right now. But we do have other waves we're watching. One right behind it. And look at this big wave train coming off of Africa. So uh, it's uh, it's going to be an active stretch right now. Now, most of our models only develop, uh, or excuse me, already it is developed. But most of our models only do much with Ernesto in the long run. Uh, but it does take some time often for the models to really latch on to some of these other waves. Uh, and sometimes it can be only a matter of time beforehand uh, that uh, they develop that the models say, hey, this is going to develop. So uh, we'll continue to watch these other waves. Again, conditions are not um, completely unfavorable or favorable, kind of middle of the road uh, favorability out here currently. Uh, so again, we could see some uh, further intensification and development of these waves behind Ernesto. And we will obviously continue to watch that. Now, uh, we do have a uh, kind of new track from the National Hurricane Center. Again, currently Ernesto, just a 40 mile an hour tropical storm. So about as weak of a tropical storm as you can get. But look at this thing on satellite. I mean, it's uh, it's not the ugliest looking storm you've ever seen for sure. Again, center of circulation now under some newly uh, developing uh, area of thunderstorms here. So we will continue to watch that. Uh, also, current pressure. Let me see if I can pull that up here. It's looking at about uh, 1,009 millibars currently. So um, you know, we uh, still a weak storm, but one that is going to strengthen. And in fact, again, expecting, uh, you know, a little bit stronger by the time we get into tonight as the storm is moving towards Guadalupe here. Uh, and then after that, uh, eventually getting between uh, kind of Antigua, Barbuda, and then up near uh, the Virgin Islands and the British Virgin Islands by the time we get into our Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday. By the time we get overnight Tuesday into Wednesday, we are expecting a 60 mile an hour tropical storm here. Uh, over the islands of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. So I uh, definitely want to see some squally, feisty conditions over the next couple of days in these regions. Uh, good news, though, is it doesn't look like we're going to see a hurricane at this point. Now, I cannot completely rule it out. Again, the storm has officially formed its center of circulation. So uh, it's going to be a little bit easier to strengthen from here on out. And we are expecting a strong tropical storm in this region. Uh, but uh, hurricane status should hold off until eventually uh, the storm gets kind of out into the middle of no man's land here, kind of away from Hispaniola, away from the Bahamas, uh, but unfortunately on a track towards Bermuda. So hurricane status is expected here uh, by the time we go from Wednesday into Thursday, probably uh, about an 80 mile an hour hurricane or category one hurricane at that point. But you'll note by the time we get towards this coming weekend, this is Friday afternoon, we've got a strong Category 2 hurricane knocking on the doorstep of major hurricane status. And uh, here's Bermuda. And look at this uh, latest line uh, from the cone here right next to the island here. So uh, the good news for Bermuda, obviously, is just the size of your island is going to make it more difficult for the storm to have a direct impact. And uh, and you'll notice uh, the cone here is, uh, you know, pretty far spreading. So it could be anywhere in this region. Uh, come uh, the time it gets here towards this weekend. But Bermuda, again, quite close to the center of that line of the cone currently. Uh, and then after that, obviously nobody else is in the cone yet, but I do expect we could see the cone uh, potentially reach up to portions of Atlantic Canada here within the next couple of days. And we will obviously continue to monitor that and keep you updated.
All right, latest spaghetti plots here, and I'm going to try to circle the island of Bermuda if I can find it on here. It might actually be under the spaghetti here, um, but uh, it's generally, uh, again, I'm truly trying to zoom in here, it's probably right about in here. So you'll notice, uh, again, we've got a lot of spaghetti models that are moving right over or near the island, and that's why the center of that NHC cone uh, is close uh, to, again, the island of Bermuda. So uh, if anyone is going to probably get rocked the hardest by the storm currently, it does look like you folks. Now, we are again going to see squally conditions to the south of there, and we'll take a look at those conditions uh, for Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and the Northern Antilles here in just a moment. Um, but uh, we are, again, probably going to see the worst of it in Bermuda if the track kind of holds where it's looking right now. Uh, so obviously we would want to prepare for that. Now, latest intensity forecast here. Again, basically all of our models get this up to hurricane status. A good number of them even getting it past this red line indicating major hurricane status. Uh, so again, right now that looks to be the general strength of the storm near the island of Bermuda. And again, uh, it'll probably be at or near peak intensity uh, during its tropical life cycle before, excuse me, it's during its tropical life cycle before becoming extra tropical after Bermuda. Uh, again, probably going to be right around peak intensity near the island here which could be a major hurricane. So we're going to want to watch that, obviously, especially if it's making a direct impact uh, on the island, then we're really going to want to uh, monitor the strength here. But definitely conditions favorable for a strengthening system. Uh, exactly how strong that is, we'll just kind of have to wait and see here. Now to the south here through St. Croix, Puerto Rico, again, uh, the Nitsa Nevis, St. Martin, and the Virgin Islands, and even down through Guadalupe and Dominica and even Martinique, a lot of these islands are going to see some pretty good rainfall. Locally, uh, amounts could be more than 150 millimeters of rainfall, but widespread 100 to 150 millimeters in those regions uh, during or, excuse me, into the south coast of Puerto Rico. Uh, could also see some pretty heavy rainfall totals, potentially more than half a foot of rain up to 200 millimeters uh, of rain is very possible, and we could see isolated spots even more than that in some of those higher terrains. Now, you folks in the Dominican Republic, also not completely out of the woods, while the center will be pretty far from you, uh, we will still see some pretty high rainfall totals on the island due to just kind of the size of the storm system here, uh, and some of that topography could play a factor as well. Could get up to half a foot of rain uh, in isolated spots there in those regions. So, uh, again, rainfall will be a big deal with this storm. As for storm surge, a, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> A uh, lesser uh, kind of concern with this one, uh, but we could see up to three feet of storm surge. So if you're in one of those really low-lying areas right on the beach, especially during high tide, uh, we could see you know some light coastal flooding or some impacts from that. Uh, so again, nothing uh, you know we haven't seen before in this region, but just kind of be prepared uh, that that could be something you'll want to watch out for. All right, wind gust wise, uh, this map has definitely gotten a little bit brighter since this morning. Uh, we are expecting tropical storm conditions, especially kind of into the Virgin Islands, uh, into the Nits and Nevis, and uh, kind of north of there through the Northern Antilles as well. Also, the island of Bermuda now above a 50% chance, ex uh, excuse me, uh, even close to a 60% chance of seeing uh, tropical storm force winds uh, in, uh, out of the storm out of uh, Ernesto here. So, uh, you know, again, we'll continue to monitor it. Bermuda, things have unfortunately become more likely that you will see direct impacts from the storm throughout the day today as we've got more model guiding, uh, more model guidance in. Um, but again, even down through Puerto Rico, probably going to see at least tropical storm conditions out of the storm system. All right, let's take a look at some models here. We will look at the latest GFS uh, here for the uh, kind of near term. And again, we're going to kind of move this ahead a little bit. But uh, again, rainy conditions the next day or so through the islands in the Caribbean here. will stay that way even into Puerto Rico, likely come Wednesday. Now, uh, the storm will probably go just to the... Um, uh, to the east of the island here, this model brings it right over, but either way, impacts are really going to remain the same. Light surge, heavy rain, and some gusty conditions, again, through all the islands that I just mentioned, uh, before eventually the storm gets north of all the islands and kind of gets out to no man's land here by Thursday afternoon, and then strengthens pretty quickly. Now, I'm going to circle the island of Bermuda here for you, just so you can kind of keep an eye on it as I move this model ahead into time. And uh, here we go, the storm pulls north, gets caught up in a trough, and eventually... Uh, on the GFS model becomes or gets very close to the island of Bermuda, but it's actually uh, to the west of it a little bit. So impacts would be more tropical storm-like compared to hurricane-like with this model run. Uh, and then eventually the storm pulls pretty far north. And uh, as we zoom things out into the North Atlantic as a whole, uh, here's the storm. We'll move this ahead even further. This is getting into this weekend. This is Sunday afternoon, and you'll notice 
the storm becoming quite strong, definitely a major hurricane as it's at the latitude of the Outer Banks of North Carolina here, uh, and uh, taking a track generally towards Atlantic Canada. And if we move this ahead further into time, getting into early next week, latest GFS gets this dangerously close to Nova Scotia. Uh, this is next Monday afternoon, so a week from right now. Again, a powerful storm, making that transition from hurricane to kind of extra tropical, but still a powerful storm nonetheless, uh, moving very close to the island here, and then uh, even making a landfall into Newfoundland uh, coming next uh, Monday or Tuesday as well. So uh, latest GFS run does bring impacts into Atlantic Canada. That's something we're going to want to watch in the long run, and I'll show you the steering currents here later on on why this very well could happen. Uh, but that's something we'll want to watch for, and then after that, it uh, could even become a strong storm potentially for folks in Europe. So, uh, you know, uh, gonna <laughs> Ernesto might kind of come full circle here from Africa all the way back up to Europe, uh, as often these uh, storms that kind of turn out to sea try to do. All right, latest from the European model and what it's showing. Again, same general idea, tropical storm. Now, the European is probably underdoing intensity a little bit here. Uh, again, we are expecting a stronger storm than is modeled here, but impacts basically going to stay the same. Rainy, squally, windy, light surge, some isolated flooding will be a concern uh, out of this storm. And then again, strengthening pretty rapidly as it gets north of the islands here and into an area of the Atlantic that luckily uh, there is no population. Now, I will once again circle the island of Bermuda here if I can find it. Uh, so here we go. Here's the island. This is Thursday into Friday uh, and kind of going to be, uh, well, I'll keep it circled. Actually, sorry, I just erased it. <laughs> um, so uh, in this uh, in this area, kind of going to be a one-two punch for Bermuda. You got a frontal system moving through, the same frontal system that is pulling up the storm. So you're likely going to get rain from that, and then you're going to get the storm itself come Thursday, Friday. Uh, depending on track, obviously impacts will be different. So the GFS was just to the uh, west of you, the European is just to the east of you, but both show powerful storms within 100 miles or uh, probably 150 kilometers or so uh, of the island. So you're going to want to pay attention. You're going to want to watch it. Again, any small shift is going to uh, you know, be a big deal on down the road with the storm. Now for our folks in Canada, we zoom things out a little bit here on the European and take a look at the Atlantic uh, Basin as a whole. Uh, here we go. Again, here's the storm near the Bermuda at the time. Also, we'll watch again, look at these waves coming off of Africa, some stronger waves with some, uh, you know, tropical disturbances uh, or tropical rain on the south side of the waves. So again, we'll watch that as well in the long run. But uh, then the storm again gets pulled north here on the European and luckily misses um, Newfoundland and Nova Scotia by a pretty good margin, especially compared to the GFS, which uh, almost brought it ashore here. And then again, this becomes a problem for Europe come 10 days or so from now. Now, also you'll notice on the field here, uh, I call it the field, I don't know why, but uh, on the map here, we do have other tropical waves. Again, uh, we've got some areas of showers and storms here in the Atlantic. We will want to watch within the next 10 days. Again, I think uh, by the time Ernesto is done threatening uh, land in North America, we'll probably be tracking our next storm or at least the idea of our next storm. So uh, you know, we've got a couple waves here that we're going to want to watch out for down the road, even after Ernesto, even if uh, the ensembles and the models right now aren't necessarily picking up on them. All right, another model I'm going to show you is the Icon. I showed it to you because it shows a different track than the others, and uh, it's a track that is less likely than what I just showed you, but still possible. So it's important to take a look at it here uh, as we continue to monitor uh, Ernesto and its path. So. Uh, this is the icon for, or the German model for the storm. Here's the storm. Uh, and a couple other things I want you to know. We've got one trough here uh, and another trough up into the northeast. Now, what most of the models are doing are attaching Ernesto to this first trough, and that's why it's kind of scooting on out of here before we really see uh, any impacts uh, towards North America, at least the mainland, uh, into the United States and into Canada. Now, what the icon does is it kind of misses this first trough or that first escape ramp. It says, well, I'm not going to catch that one. Uh, and then what happens next is the storm actually kind of gets pulled up by the other trough as it's moving through the northeastern United States. And because of that, uh, we've got a storm that is almost as close to the Carolinas as it is Bermuda and pulling north generally towards the northeastern United States and eastern Canada uh, as those two systems interact. And then you'll notice here, uh, again, luckily not making landfall in the United States, but on a trajectory that would take it towards uh, places like Nova Scotia, potentially New Brunswick, um, and uh, Newfoundland as well. So it's a uh, possibility we will definitely want to continue to watch for. Again, not as likely as the more out-to-sea route that I showed you, but it is uh, a route that we'll need to watch. And again, even our European ensemble members kind of are picking up on this general idea of two troughs 
Uh, it's just a matter of which one is the storm going to latch onto. So uh, the European is a lot less progressive with these troughs, just meaning they're a little bit slower. And because of that, here's the first trough. Uh, the storm is much closer to that than our other trough way on behind it. Uh, and thus, again, kind of takes that more out to sea route uh, and is much less of a problem for Canada and the United States. Uh, but then that other trough does hang around for a while in the eastern United States, which will be important for later on storms, depending how long it hangs around. Again, could uh, lead storms kind of into uh, parts of the United States. So we'll definitely need to monitor that as well. All right, latest ensemble data. This is the European and its ensembles. Again, not set in stone for you folks in Canada. We've kind of got two camps here. We've got one camp on the left side of Bermuda and one on the right, but you'll notice a lot of these members still try to kind of bend this closer up towards uh, Canada before finally, you know, moving it further out to sea. So uh, especially you folks, I think uh, in Newfoundland, obviously Nova Scotia, New Brunswick as well, but Newfoundland especially, gonna wanna keep an eye on this because again, uh, things are going to change and we still have a widespread in the long run uh, on where this storm will go and you'll see the same thing in the GFS and its ensemble members again a pretty widespread here with some members getting this close to uh, the uh, Atlantic areas of Canada so we'll definitely want to watch that. All right final thing I'll show you here tropic, uh, global tropics hazard outlook uh, for the next two to three weeks uh, again, through the kind of middle of the month, we're going to continue to watch the Atlantic, even the Gulf of Mexico could try to come to life. Uh, and then by the time we get towards the end of the month, much of the Gulf and into really the main development region of the Atlantic will likely wake up. Uh, and again, I know you're probably thinking right now, well, the models are not very excited about anything. Uh, again, it doesn't mean something won't form. In fact, a lot of the times it can kind of sneak up on us. Uh, we've seen that plenty of times with storms and should it sneak up on us and be, you know, closer to the United States near the Gulf or the Caribbean, uh, then we'll definitely want to keep an eye on it. But right now, outside of Ernesto, things are relatively quiet. Uh, just kind of waiting for that next um, idea that the models are going to latch on to uh, to kind of track. But again, I'll remind you, here we go. Uh, multiple waves continue to roll off of Africa and get into this main development region. Uh, and uh, it's going to be something we need to watch here on down the road. So, uh, alrighty. Again, I appreciate y'all hanging in there for the tropical update tonight. Have a great rest of your evening, and I'll see you all bright and early tomorrow morning.